Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at equity valuation. And basically, we're going to be looking at introduction to equity valuation, very basic techniques. We're going to start by discussing why do we do equity valuation. Before we start, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn and subscribe to my YouTube if you haven't done so. I have plenty of resources in terms of lectures for various accounting, finance, and especially CPA exam. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. And on my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources, especially if you are studying for your CPA CPA exam, or if you'd like to complement or supplement your accounting or finance courses. Now, why equity valuation? Why do we why do we do equity valuation? Why do we bother to do that? Simply put, we want to identify stocks that are mispriced. What does that mean? If they're mispriced, we can buy them. If the end eventually the stock price would reflect reality, we'll make money. So the purpose of fundamental analysis, which is doing equity valuation, is to identify stocks that are mispriced relative to some measure of their true or intrinsic value that can be derived from observable financial data. Now also, the, it, there is no, the true, we don't know the true, it's not a fact, factual price, it's an estimated price. So that's what we're doing, we're doing analysis. So really in practice, stock analysis use models. And once you hear the word model, it means you are going to estimate. It's model to estimate the fundamental value of a corporation's stock from some observable market data. We look at the market data, financial statements of the firm itself, and we can look at competitors. So these valuation models differ in specific data they use and in the level of their the theoretical sophistication. So we, you could have two different analysts, two different uh, CFAs, two different firms, and they could look at the same data and come up with different answers because you are doing model where what's your growth? Is it 10%, 8%? What assumptions are you making? So it's all estimate. So by, by their heart, most of the analysts use the notion by valuation by comparable. What does that mean? It means you look at one company and you might look at its competitor to see how well they are doing. You would look, they would look at the relationship between price and various factors of value for similar firms. And then you project that relationship to the firm in question. Um, but again, when you look at two firms, we're going to look at two firms. Sometimes you're going to, oftentimes you're going to have conflicting information. So you have to know how to read and how to analyze. Here we have the data for Apple and Google or Alphabet, the parent company of Google. So these valuation ratios are commonly used to assess the valuation of one firm compared to another. For example, profitability ratios, return on equity, return on asset, operating profit margin, net profit margin. I'm not going to go over those today. We're, we're going to go over them later on in a separate chapter. We could look at sales, earnings before interest, uh, interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization, net income, earnings per share. We could look at valuation. This is the valuation ratio here, P.E. ratio price to book ratio. And let's take a look at the PE ratio. If you look at the PE ratio, price to earning, we see that Alphabet or Google, their PE ratio is, Google is way more expensive based on their earnings. So you pay more per $1 earning. Don't worry if you don't understand PE ratio, we're going to look at it way, way in details in this chapter because this chapter is about valuation. All you have to know for now that Google is more expensive in terms of PE ratio. When we look at the price to book ratio, we notice that Apple is more expensive to their price relative to its books than Google, which is 4.2. But I happened to look up Apple today. Apple today is 4.22, but I did not look up. I did not look up Google. It does not matter for now. The point is, this and these numbers sometimes they give you conflicting signal. That's that's the point. So you really have to understand the business, and you have at the end you are making estimate. But I'm going to focus a little bit more in this session about the book value per share. And what's the book value? When we say the book value, it means all what we mean by the book value means taking the assets of the company, subtracting the liabilities from the company, coming with equity. So let, let me work some numbers real quick. Let's assume we have 100,000 in assets minus 30,000 in liabilities. Equity is 70,000. Now what we do, I'm going to make it simple. If we say 70,000 in equity and we have 35,000 shares, I just made up this number. So the book value per share equal to $2. So if we take all the book equity, again, book means accounting figures. Here we are looking at strictly accounting figures, divide them by the number of shares, then the book value per share, the book value based on the company accounting numbers, which is historical cost, not really useful, is $2. So what we do is we compare the price to the book value. That's all what's to it. 
Okay, so what are the limitation of the book value? Because we want to get this out of the way. Just, okay, can you think of any? I just mentioned something, historical cost, valuation used historical cost. So the limit of limitation of the book value. Again, the book value, sometimes it's called the residual value because assets minus liabilities equal to equity. Equity is also called the residual value. What's left? Or net worth, asset minus liabilities. The value of their, of their stake is that it's left over when the liabilities of the firm are subtracted from the asset, asset minus liabilities. Shareholders equity is this net worth. This is what we're saying, what's left. You have to understand the value of the assets as well as the liabilities are based at historical cost, not current or market value. So when you look at the book value, you're looking at accounting numbers, which are meaningless, meaningless for, for, for many reasons. One is their property, plant, and equipment. The book value of assets equal to, to the original cost, which is the acquisition cost, less adjustment for depreciation. So what happened is if you bought a building for you know $800,000, that's your cost, and you bought this building back in the 80s, now this building is depreciated, and you depreciated already 600,000 of it, or let's, let's assume in the 90s, because in the 80s it should have been fully depreciated by now. Let's assume you depreciated 600,000, so the book value of it, the book value equal to 200,000, but the market value of this building could be 5 million, the true, the true value or the true replacement cost or the current value. But if we use the book value numbers, we say, well, we have a building worth on the books, 200,000, which is meaningless. And this is just an example of the limitation of the book value. We can say the same thing about liabilities. Remember, if interest rate goes up or if interest rate goes down, your liabilities, your bond will change in value. Okay. So moreover, depreciation allowance are used to allocate the original cost of the asset over several years. Do not reflect loss of the actual value, especially for buildings and land. Oftentimes, these assets increase in value, but on the books, we reduce their value, not land, because land is not depreciable, but land goes up. And stock price of a company could dip below the book value. Now, this is not normal. This is not normal. This is not the usual thing. So the book value is not a floor. A lot of people think, well, well, if the book value is $2, it means, you know, the, the stock price should not go down below $2. Well, it happens to many banks back in the financial crisis, but specifically, I still remember Bank of America, and as well as other banks like Citibank and all these other banks, what happened to these banks is this. They had assets on the books, a lot of assets. On the books, they had assets, okay? Assets in billions, okay? But those assets were toxic assets. They're toxic assets. Assets like the, uh, the uh, mortgage-backed securities. Those assets were not really worth much. On the books, they were worth million, but the stock price was reflecting their toxic their toxic, toxic, their toxic value. Okay. So what happened is the stock price, the stock price was lower than the book value. It was lower than the book value. Again, because they were also that the reason they survived because they were supported by the government, but with the bailout. But that's beside the point. The point is, the book value of the stock could drop below the, uh, the book, the stock price could drop below the book value. That's not normal. Uh, because what, what does that mean? <laughs> it means if you sell all the company, if you sell all the company's asset, it's worth less than its stock price. That's that's on the contrary. Usually when we value a company, we look at their book value per share, then we multiply it by a multiple, like you multiply it by three for certain industries. For other industries, you multiply the price by five. If the industry is growing very fast, you multiply the multiple by 10. But that's, you know, for example, if we saw Apple, Apple and Apple and Google seems it's around five, the multiple of those type of companies. Liquidation value is the amount of money could be realized by breaking up the firm, selling its asset, repaying its debt, and distributing the remainder to shareholders. Hold on a second. Didn't I just say this is the book value? Well, not really. This is a little bit different. It's kind of the book value, but you're using the liquidation. It's if you want to sell them today. Think of it as think of it as the market value. Liquidation value is the market value. So if the market capitalization, this is in theory, drops below liquidation value. So simply put, is the stock price. Market capitalization means the stock price times the number of shares drop below the liquidation value, guess what? The firm becomes an attractive takeover. Why? Because buy it, buy the stocks, buy the company and sell it, sell its asset and you're going to get more money. A corporate trader will find it profitable to buy enough shares to gain control. So let's assume the market capitalization for the sake of illustration is 50 billion. 
okay market capitalization you can buy the whole company for 50 billion and if you look at their assets and their liabilities they're worth 70 billion net if you sell them you can sell all the assets minus you pay off the liabilities and you're left with 70 billion well what you do is you'll buy the company and sell its asset this is what the liquidation value is we also have the replacement cost it's the another measure of the firm value is the replacement cost of assets less liabilities here you, if you want to replace this asset how much would it cost you now some analysts believe the market value of the firm cannot get too far above its replacement cost because if it did competitors will enter the market now if it, if it went too far then you can enter the market and make money okay because you can have those assets and the value of those assets will be higher because your replacement cost is higher resulting res the resulting competitive pressure would drive down the profit and the market value of all firms until they fell to replacement cost. so simply put they're saying the company should be worth its replacement cost the idea is popular among economists so this is not security analysis no one really believe in this and the ratio of market market price to replacement cost is known as the Tobin skew after the Nobel Prize winning economist James Tobin again in the long run according to this view the ratio of market to replacement will 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 be one but evidence is that this ratio can differ significantly from one for a long period of time again we're here we're talking from an economic economist perspective if you notice everything that we talked about in this session about valuation we focused on we focused on assets and liabilities minus liabilities that's the basic idea replacing replacing the asset finding the liquidation value it's all based on the balance sheet so yes looking at the balance sheet is not a bad idea it could, it could give us some useful information about the firm's liquidation value its replacement cost but really that's not what we do when we analyze stocks when we analyze equity what do we look for well we look for something we are all familiar with cash future cash flow how much you're going to generate future notice the word future here that's very important the balance sheet is old information so future cash flow for a better estimate of the firm value as a going concern and this is what we'll look at in the next starting with the next session starting to look at the intrinsic value versus the market price then we would look at more future cash flow and dividend model but we're, we're going to be heading that way. So if you like this recording, please like it and share it. And don't forget to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, for additional resources for your CPA exam or for this or other courses. Good luck, study hard, and most importantly, stay safe.